12th generation Corolla hatch and touring sports estate models have gained many friends for Toyota amongst family hatch customers wanting full hybrid power. Now that engine's been significantly improved in both its forms, as has the interior of this E210 series design. If you'd previously dismissed this model from the Japanese brand as an also ran in the Focus class, it might be time to think again. A lot's different with this updated version of this 12th generation Corolla Hybrid, particularly if you try this 1.8 litre version, the one 85% of customers choose. If you happen to be familiar with this base engine in the pre-facelift version of this car, you'll immediately notice upon setting off that everything's a fair bit brisker. The 0-62 mile an hour time of 9.1 seconds is a full 1.8 seconds quicker. And that's because total system output's risen quite a lot, up from 122 to 140 horsepower. Which in turn is because there's a gutsier electric motor, 23 horsepower more powerful. And because the battery pack has a 14% greater output and is 14% lighter. As before, there's still a larger capacity 2-litre version of this hybrid power plant available. That's also been upgraded, with power up from 184 to 196 horsepower, which means 0 to 62 miles an hour takes just 7.4 seconds. But because this Corolla isn't the kind of car you ever really want to drive that fast, you'll rarely get the benefit of this or of a pulling power figure that rises from 142 newton meters in the 1.8 to 190 newton meters in the 2 litre. With both the hybrid drivetrains, Toyota's put in a lot of effort to remap accelerator response so that it works more seamlessly with the CVT belt-driven auto gearbox and better matches what your right foot's trying to achieve. Sure enough, things are certainly smoother under heavy acceleration, particularly if you switch out of the car's two usual drive modes, grey-themed normal and turquoise-themed eco, and into red-themed sport. It's still far from perfect though, and the CVT transmission's occasional uncertainty and the drive system's background lowing noise when you try and push it along faster than it wants to go, both remain sometimes annoying. You'd forgive this car much though for its supple ride and impressive refinement, and of course the hybrid system superbly efficient, aided by a clever, predictive, efficient drive system, which uses drive data GPS mapping to adapt the drivetrain for deceleration, downhill topography and traffic congestion. The result is a class-leading set of stats for this self-charging hybrid, up to 64.2 mpg on the combined cycle with a CO2 reading of up to 100 grams per kilometre for the base Icon hatch version. Lots of EcoDrive tools are provided to help you with this and you'll also need to keep the gear stick in B rather than D to maximise regenerative braking. As you can see, we've opted for the hatch here. The alternative touring sports estate sits on a wheelbase significantly lengthened by 60 millimetres. Either way, from the side, the ultra short overhangs are notable, as is the unusual mid-level panel creasing. It's at the front where the updates primarily feature, but you'd need to be a Toyota loyalist to spot them. There are changes to the front grille pattern, the little round fog light bezels, and the daytime running light signature in LED headlights that can now be had in more advanced multi-beam form at the top of the range. The rear is also cleanly styled, if perhaps not quite as distinctive. The rounded shaping is made possible by the use of a resin material for the tailgate, which allows the fabrication of more complex curves. These complemented by quite an angled rear screen. Okay, let's take a look inside. Now, if there was one area this 12th generation Corolla needed to take a big step forward, it was in cabin design and media tech. Has that happened? Let's take a look. As it turns out, the cabin design hasn't changed much, but the MediaTek could hardly be more different. These two new screens, a 12.3 inch digital cockpit combi meter instrument display, and a confidently positioned 10.5 inch Toyota Smart Connect Plus central monitor, at a stroke, position the updated version of this Corolla as a design of this decade rather than the previous one. This Smart Connect Plus package includes over-the-air updates, the expected Apple CarPlay and 
Android Auto, smartphone mirroring and cloud-based navigation incorporating real-time traffic information. Your first impression will be that it's all a big improvement on the old Toyota Touch tech and first impressions count, which is why Toyota's taken care with the trimming here, a cut above what you get in a rival Focus or a Golf. They've also worked hard on the seats, which are very comfortable and across the range incorporate standard heating and powered lumbar support for the driver. There's a reasonable amount of cabin stowage space, Plus, most models get all-round parking sensors and a rear-view camera, which is just as well because the relatively chunky rear pillars mean that over-the-shoulder vision is less than perfect. OK, time to check out the back seat. Once you're in, it certainly feels somewhat cramped by class standards, both in terms of leg and headroom. You're a little better off with the alternative touring sports estate body style because, as we told you earlier, that has a slightly stretched wheelbase. But even compared to that model, most rivals feel considerably roomier. We'll finish with a look at the cargo area, the roominess of which varies quite a lot, not only with body style, but also with engine choice. With the 1.8-litre hybrid engine fitted, this hatch version offers 361 litres, a figure that rises to 596 litres in the Touring Sports Estate. But bear in mind, though, that if you opt for the hatch or the estate with a larger 2-litre hybrid power plant, capacity will fall to 313 litres on the hatch and 581 litres on the Touring Sports version. At its original launch, this 12th generation Corolla was very much a left field player in the family hatch C segment, a car for eco folk or perhaps a thoughtful private buyer. But things have changed. This is how to write a bestseller. Plus, as before, it's nice to look at and British built too. Not everything's ideal, of course. Primarily, we remain disappointed by this Toyota's rather cramped levels of rear seat space and its relatively compact boot. So make sure you can live with both of those issues and with pricing that's crept up quite a lot in recent times. If, though, you can square off those issues, then you'll find lots here to like from a car that for us has become rather a default choice in this segment. Toyota pioneered hybrid technology. It still does, and it still shows.